I'm Device from Astralis and welcome to Foreign's YouTube channel. It's a joke free zone. Astralis is the number one team in the world and have, they have been at the top for around three years. CS Money is the number one skin marketplace in the world and they've been around for around three years. So it only makes sense they'd work together because CS Money is the official partner of Astralis. Astralis are the number one team in the world, like I said. But the crazy thing about them to me is they were the number one team like a year and a half ago, obviously with the same core, but going back a few years, they were the number one team. They won a major at that point in time. They're also the reigning champion of the last three straight majors in CSGO. Nobody has ever done anything even close to that. I mean, these guys are the goats even of longevity, never mind just the goats of CS history. Yes, okay, last year they had the six-month skid, but they recovered from it, they returned from it, they rebuilt, they rebooted. They're back, they're the best team. Maybe not as good, but then will anyone ever be as good? Probably not, right? So why do they have this longevity? How are they able to get to the top, and crucially, stay at the top. Now, I use the word stay at the top because it's not as though you get there and then keep doing what you're doing, and then that just means you remain. One of the things is you have to stay there, so it's like you have to keep rising up. It's the fact that no one else can keep going with you that they don't overtake you. So I often break down Counter-Strike into three columns in order to break it down to the layman, and then from then, those different areas, those different magisterium, we can go in many directions. So the three columns are we have skill, now listen, the skill of Astralis is clearly good, at times very good, but it's not outrageous. It's not where FaZe was a few years ago. I don't think it's where SK was in 2017. There have been teams that had better raw skill level. Tactics. Tactics in Astralis are at the highest level, right? Yes, one of the absolute best in the world we've got in that regard. But what is the third column? Team play. The team play is the most underrated aspect of Astralis, in my opinion, because people focus on the tactic they do and then the skill and talk about how good the players are, and they don't always understand the interactions between the players. So consider the long time span that Astralis stays at the top. Forget the one and a half years or the three years or how many majors. Really, a long time span to be at the top in CS is a year. That is actually very few teams have ever been number one in Counter-Strike for a year. Nine months. Even to have six months at the top is pretty big. You're a team that's approaching an era at that point in time. So when you're talking about this long time span of a year, the skill in terms of what each individual player can output and what his performance level can be in each individual match over that year can't be consistent. It's actually the problem that the GOAT players, the Get Rights, the Sharks, Kenny S, Simple Z, they actually warp our mind to think that in a team game, one guy can be the best every time for his team, every month for his team, for a year in one team. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, you go watch any team sport. It's only games like the NBA with their GOAT players that can have something similar. And quite frankly, salary cap is what makes that happen. If you could spread players around in that sport, you'd have way more super teams where they'd take turns being the best. So... That's one of the areas where normal pros, people who are just mere mortals, they have their highs, they have their lows, and that's why that whole cliche of timing is everything is so big for those players. That's why immortals, when everything went perfect, went to a major final, and then after that went nothing with the same lineup. And before that, weren't that big a deal. They just did a couple of tournaments, they were really good. So one of the keys to me for longevity that Astralis had is you have to have stars or star potential players who can rotate in and out. It's one of the reasons why when I made my roles, set up my balance in the concept of the game, most teams are going to have two star players and then have this hybrid who can become a star or can become a team player element. And that's the idea is he can step up one of the, one of the others one isn't there. So listen, Astralis have a player who quite frankly is... Yeah, he's about close to God, Tim. I mean, if Zewu and Simple didn't exist, we'd be saying this guy was the God. It's Device, right? Yeah, he's pretty much most of the time going to be the best player, but even he has like, games, he's off, maps, he's off. Sometimes as a tournament, that's a little bit underwhelming, despite being generally a very good player. I would say actually because he doesn't have the same peaks as Zewu and, and Simple, he just has more consistency with overall performance. I mean, they're, they're God. So again, we're getting into the weeds and we're having that kind of a debate. But outside of Device, it's obviously not just Device in this team, is it? We all know Dupree at times can be an amazing player, one of the best in the world. Magus can look like the best player in the team at times. I mean, his consistency is bonkers, especially with how many star performances he is able to have. Zipnix does his job and then will have the odd tournament where he just wins way more clutches than even he should win. Glaive throws in an occasion ridiculous skill event just to show like hey fuck it I'm the best tactical game leader I'll just have one where I win the MVP as well it's ridiculous how they can rotate 
the talent in this team. It's not I'm saying they're doing it consciously. Everyone's trying to be their best and trying to do their role. But that's one of the factors that plays into how your team's balanced out and whether you can be a team with longevity. If you don't have these players that can rotate in like that, you're going to have problems. So you look at some of the other great teams, the FaZe clan that had Carrigan and Orf, Meister and Nico. It wasn't just a scenario where it was just Nico went off every tournament. Like, yes, Guardian could be really, really solid, but Rain would have crazy tournaments every now and then. Olaf would throw in the odd one where he was not still one of the other great teams. The, the previous GOATs before Strauss was Fnatic, right? That wasn't just Olaf Meister. In fact, a lot of people don't know. I'll do some content on this. For the first seven, eight months of that team existing... Olaf Meister wasn't even the best player in the team. Like, early on, it was Crims and JW when they were winning every tournament. Then it was Olaf Meister and Crims, the legendary duo. Then later on, it, I would say maybe Olaf and Flasher, Flasher particularly at the majors. The way, again, they were able to get rotating performances in terms of who's the best in the team, that was what made, managed to keep them at the top. If it had just been that they were relying only on Olaf Meister or only Olaf Meister and JW, for example, they would have never done half the shit they did in 2015. If they hadn't have had Flusher, some of those majors might not have gone their way. Then you go to SK Gaming. Well, how about when in 2016, it was obviously Fallen and Cold Zero, not in that order. Then he came in 2017, Fur was right there with Cold Zero at most of those events. Fallen could have events off practically because Fur was so good. A player who previously was just a good player steps forwards, becomes one of the best in the world. Again, the rotation was there. That's why they were able to win like the whatever it was, five out of six events, look like they were going to win PGL Krakow. Virtus Pro, with their incredible longevity, had four players they cycled in at being among their best. Because everyone knows, obviously, yes, Snacks was overall the best. But early on, it was Snacks and Pasha. And then at other times, it could be Snacks and Bialy. At certain times, you could even argue it was a, a very occasionally, it could have been Bialy and, and uh, Pasha. Neo, obviously, had that brief summer, I think it was in... 2015, where Sevo P season seven, where he was the MVP, he was the Orpa, even he had a few times. Then he came the next year for E League season one. We did that whole thing for the playoffs of like Neo versus Forest. And actually, Neo outperformed Forest in that match when they played in, I think, was it the semi finals or the quarter finals? I think probably the semi finals. Now, you come to Team Liquid last year, they had a liege, but they also had Twist and they had Naf, and then obviously they had a plethora of players. Like, obviously, Nitro could have ridiculous games and still you had great impact. So, the performances, not having to all come from one or two players, just gives you way better chance to manage the tough times, to manage people's dips in form. Even sometimes to count on certain opponents that would have beaten you if only your main two stars had gone off. It's one of the reasons why I personally don't look to teams like Vitality and Na'Vi for the last couple of years to win the big events because Vitality has to be Zewu, otherwise they're just done. You saw that in the major. And then Na'Vi pretty much needed to be simple and electronic. And then Flamey, he just has the odd map where he goes crazy. He's generally not having those big tournaments overall. Boom, which isn't that type of player. And Guardian was terrible. So they actually were limited in the sense that they put too much pressure on those godlike players to have to be godlike every single game just to have their normal game come out. So that was too much. Astralis doesn't rely in that same way on those. Then you go to the tactical side, right? The evolution of tactics is what's so underrated. And that's what we can talk about with a team like Astralis, but the other teams as well. So one of the things that's so crazy to me is when, when people talk about, oh, this team was figured out, like it's inevitable you get figured out. No, that's only if you keep doing the same things over and over again. I just shake my head at that sort of shit. So when SK, the Brazilians, started talking about how when they fell off, you know, other people caught up and they were studying ours and figured some of our things out. Yeah, that means you didn't keep developing. And in fact, I know from talking to some of their players, you didn't go listen to that thing I did for Blast the other day with Fallen, etc. They had a style and a system and a paradigm of CS that was working so well. Partly, they sort of thought they'd cracked the game. They sort of thought they'd figured it out they could just replicate that over and over again, they'd stay on top. No. What happened is other people figured out some of the things they figured out and then they didn't have the next evolution. They didn't have an updated new tweak on it that made them remain the best. When you have tactics, the idea is the tactics that worked yesterday and helped you win those championships, either they still work because you make the execution even tighter or you use the expectation of what you did yesterday to succeed with your opponent then trying to counter that and your next set of tactics come as a spring from the tree of those tactics coming out as options that actually are answers to the counters that the other person's been preparing. That's how you stay on top and never lose a tournament. 
over like a ridiculous span of time or lose two out of every 10 or whatever it is Astralis used to do. That's the way you do that kind of crazy. So what's really crazy about Astralis is they're actually underrated tactically because what people don't say is they say they're the best tactics and they're just the best team for the whole time. No, what's crazy is they're the best tactics and in between tournaments when people would have found the answers and would have come to the next tournament and beaten them, they were able to keep building and reassembling and throwing away great tactics and things that were good but were like one-offs or would only work a few times and they were able to keep building the same level of strat book, but not the same strat book over and over and over again. So it's like if for each month we gave someone an award, best strat book of the month, they were the ones winning it like 10 out of 12 months. It was crazy. So mad props to Glaive and Zonic for what they were able to do in that sense. Then you come to that third column I talked about, team player. Well, first of all, they have a level of familiarity few other teams can even fuck with. The closest is maybe the Fnatic guys, because if you look at this team, Three of them, their core, Device to pre Zipniks, have played together for like six years. I mean, the Fnatic story I told you, I've often mentioned from when they were at their peak, was that if you heard the comms or ZSL events, they barely had to come. They just knew what was going to happen. And then they intuitively knew if this guy does this, I do this next. Or I know what he's going to do because I've played with him so long. Therefore, I'm going to play off him anyway. But I don't have to even say it. I don't even have to have constant communication like some of those NA teams. Look at those teams that have remained and had the longevity. So like NIP core, you look at the SK core in terms of a couple of years. The Fnatic core, obviously now they've even come back. Virtus Pro were incredible for longevity. Longevity. And now Astralis, I would say, is approaching the point where they're overtaking the crazy longevity that VP had, especially because VP rarely was number one. They were just in the top five, whereas Astralis is going back to number one again and staying there. So then you consider if you played for someone that long and you've had that much success with them and you've played these roles for so long and then you've played all the maps together, imagine the trust that you'll have in them. Imagine the trust when Glaive makes a call. Even if it sounds wrong to you, you're just going to do it. It's Glaive. He's called some god-tier game-winning tactics. If if one of my teammates makes a move, I don't have to think, well, is this, will this work? Should I go with it? Am I going to look stupid? Like, will he pull it off? I trust him. I know it is. I'm Megas He's Dupree. I know he's going to do it right. Oh, it's Device doing a move there. I know how to follow up on him. I know what to do there. I know he needs to get a, a clutch kill here. So I'll set him up in this way so someone's covering his back. The sacrifice that comes in in that sense, it's easy to engender that. It's really hard in other teams. There's a lot of teams you wouldn't believe where people are sort of letting the guy hanging him out to dry so they don't look bad or thinking, well, I didn't agree with what he was doing there. Anyway, I'll punish him by letting... There's a lot of that shit. There's no second guessing or mistrust in teams like Astralis. That's why they're able to be so incredible at the top. And then finally, an area I'm going to expand upon because it's a, it's a big kind of paradigm I've been developing the last couple of years is that I think the ultimate expression of team play and role balance and team balance when you're building a team and then maintaining it is where my strength should cover part of one of the other teammates' weaknesses. And hopefully one of his strengths covers one of my weaknesses. So that overlap makes it look as though we have very few or no weaknesses. That's one of the reasons why I think personally, the, any player in any of these super like uh, legendary GOAT teams gets over it to some degree because people take them in isolation and don't consider who was with them. But more importantly, teams like Astralis, I think, for example, that's why their players get overrated for the skill of some of them. I think some of them wouldn't be the monsters that people think they would if you took another player out the team and just put another good player in who had similar stats but isn't that player so I, I think the overlap is quite essential to it now listen this can't last forever like Astralis are already the outliers in the sense VP just defied history completely teams like Nip and SK and Fnatic to some degree showed us that the, it runs out eventually just having that these co components but that isn't even always just on you some of that is like other great teams develop and so it's their time to be on top so I don't know how long it can last I'm already impressed I'm, in, I'm impressed I'm in awe of how long it's lasting but these are some of the factors that play into Astralis's longevity. This video was kindly supported by Alexander Rao, Blunt Smoking Anus Destroyer, Dane Cuskley, Dean Tanglas, Ho Chi Mao, J Dobbs, Nate Dio Double G, Peter the Feeder, Tobias Bernasconi, and a special thanks goes out to Jerky's Minion and Mohammed Al Abdul Razak. Do you want to suggest a topic or a guest for my content? Maybe you'd like to ask me a question in my monthly Patreon AMA. Would you like teasers on upcoming content that I'm doing? Maybe you want to take part in a discussion directly with me. Well, if so, then put your money where your mouth is and join the Skluminati today at the Patreon link in the description below.